Mirror's Mirror, page 96. John the Apostle and Evangelist was son of Zebedee and brother of James the Greater. He was born at Nazareth and by occupation a fisherman. He was called by Christ when engaged with his father and brother in mending their nets for fishing. As soon as he heard the words of Christ, he immediately left the nets, the ship, and his father, and together with James, his beloved brother, followed Christ. Afterwards, he became from a disciple an apostle of Christ and was numbered with the twelve whom the Lord had specially chosen for his service. He was greatly beloved by the Lord, so that the supper... At the supper, he reclined on Christ's bosom and leaned or rested on his breast. The Lord, moreover, had accepted him as one of his three most special friends to bear testimony of his works, not only in his conflict and suffering in the Garden of Gethsemane, but also in his glory in the raising of the daughter of Jairus, as well as in the showing forth of his majesty. When on the holy mount, his face shone as the sun, and his raiment became white as light. From an inward love, he followed the Lord, not only into the house of the priest Caiaphas, but also to the Mount Calvary, without the city of Jerusalem, where the Lord was put to death. There the Lord, hanging on the cross, addressed him, saying, Son, behold thy mother. He was so eager after the resurrection of Christ that in running to his grave with his fellow apostle Peter, he outran the latter, thus showing his affection for his Lord, who had died an ig ignominious death and was entirely forsaken by his other friends. Some years afterward, in order to refute the errors of Ebion and Serinthus, who denied the divinity of Christ, he wrote in his gospel to honor and magnifying of his Savior, commencing thus, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And the Word was made flesh. In these words, he gives us to understand the true incarnation of the Son of God, to whom be praise and glory forever. Amen. John is called throughout the gospel, the beloved of the Lord, or the disciple whom Jesus loved, because the Lord so especially loved him. But since it is the will of God to bring his children to glory through much tribulation and distress, this beloved friend of God, John, also could not escape, but was tried throughout his life with manifold tribulations, according to what the Lord had told him and his brother James, ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism that I am baptized with all shall ye be baptized. That is, ye shall also be subjected to my suffering and distress. This was afterwards fulfilled in him in manifold ways. For besides what the ancient writers have recorded concerning it, namely that at Rome he was put into a vat full of boiling oil, but was miraculous delivered, uh, miraculously delivered out of it, the merits of which account we leave unquestioned. This much according to the scriptures is certain namely that he spent a long time on the desert island of Patmos, whither he had been banished for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Concerning this, John himself makes this declaration, Revelation 1.9, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle of Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ, but by whom and in what manner he was banished to that desert island is not stated in the scriptures, except that he was in tribulation for the word of God. Some of the ancient writers, however, stated that he was banished by Emperor Domitian about AD 97, who in his wrath and displeasure, because he preached the word of God and confessed Christ as the son of God, had him sentenced and banished thither. 
On this island, which lies in the Mediterranean between Asia Minor and Greece, 125 miles northwestward of Jerusalem, he was indeed forsaken of men and had scarcely any companionship, aside from poisonous and noxious animals which dwelt in the place. Nevertheless, the Lord God dwelt with him with his heavenly consolation and during his banishment presented and revealed to him very beautiful scenes and glorious visions concerning the condition of the church of God to the end of the world. How he wrote his apocalypse or revelation, an excellent book full of divine and truthful prophecies taken from the pre preceding visions and heavenly sights, some of which are already fulfilled and others remain to be fulfilled. As the time of his deliverance began to draw nigh, the Lord spoke to him on the island, saying, Behold, I come quickly. Amen. Whereupon John replied with a well-comforted soul, Even so, come Lord Jesus. When the emperor, Domitian, who had banished him to the aforesaid island, was dead, and Nerva reigned in his stead, he was delivered and brought back to Ephesus, where he had previously been bishop of the church. This occurred, according to history, about A.D. 99. Consequently, his confinement there lasted two years. The ancients write that he suffered much yet for the name of Christ and was compelled to drink poison, yet remained unharmed, according to the promise of Christ, and that he finally died in peace at Ephesus in the time of the emperor Trajan, having served in the Holy Gospel for 51 years and being 80 years old. And thus, this great light rests in Asia.